In this video, I'm going to talk about the Nenji bot. That's B-O-T, as in a robot. The Nenji bot is a script, or really a whole section of the Nenji API, that allows you to make automated bots that can play your game. It's a great tool for analyzing your code and finding the choke points in it and getting to higher player counts, finding bugs, just generally enhancing the performance of things, and also coming to some degree of confidence about how many players your game can handle. It's very difficult to test a game with 50 players. You don't necessarily have 50 friends who can all hop in your game at any, at any moment, especially not while you're testing. The bot gets us partway there. I'm going to use the 2D shooter demo from the Ninji website as the game I um, test with the bot. All I've got open here is I've got that game running on the server here and I've got its client built over here. Um, you can go look at the 2D shooter related tutorials to see how to do that. So the bot is one of the three folders in the game. If we go, go take a look, um, I used it a little bit in one of the other videos, but just to start over with that, there's two bots um, in the folder right away. One bot which shows what it's like uh, when you connect multiple players. It's a bot. It's a bot script that just connects the bot many times. And then there's another bot which connects a single bot that captures binary data from the server and is a crude measurement of bandwidth. So let's use this bot and just demonstrate it again real quick. First things first, even without the bot, I'm just going to start playing the game. Just get one one player in there. So this is me controlling one character. And let's make some room. I'm going to open the bot script over here. And this one, I've set it for 10 players, just in this loop right here. And we're going to run that. We're going to need a separate command prompt to do this because it's a node program. All right, I'm just running node bot.js. That's the one that connects multiple. So here they are. They're moving around. How is that possible? Well, this particular bot has imported the same command, which is used on the client side to send player input. It imports that command and it's sending it. It's populating that command, which this was a command that sent the states of the W, A, S, and D keys, as well as the mouse position and whether the mouse was being held down. That's the, what, seven things it sends. This one's sending random, pretty much random data, data for W, A, S, D, and everything else is zero or false. So this creates this jittery moving around motion. Why send random data? Why do this at all? This doesn't look like a real player. Well, at least in this current state, it's sending as much data to the server as a real player would if a real player were to be hitting all the keys. In fact, just by sending that command at all, we're simulating real data. However, the movement is important because that also means that the server has to tell each of the clients, oh, those entities have changed some amount. So this is simulating somewhat realistic load for 10 players. Now, the key to using the bots, well, you can use them in a variety of ways. Uh, there's, there's two things I, that are important. First, as you develop your game and you do add player input, commands, and things that can be sent from the client, it's helpful if you keep pace with that in your bot scripts. Like you might not think the bot's important, you just want to work on the game, but the game needs tested. There's many ways to do that, and the bot is one of the great ways to test a multiplayer game. So as you make your game itself, give some love to the bot script and maintain your ability to test these features that you're creating. So this one's already got player input. We're just going to go ahead and keep adding bots until we start to see some sort of failure in the game. And then I'm going to show you how to figure out what type of failure we're encountering. So this one connects 10. Let's connect 30. Just going to be opening and closing, or rather canceling and restarting the bot script. So now that's 30. Looking pretty good to me. Movement's feeling smooth for the for the character I can control. Let's knock that up to 60. At this point, even at 60 players, you know, we see some lag on connect, but second later, it's okay. 
The reason you may see lag on connecting when running things like the bot script is that Windows or whatever OS is going to open up a bunch of sockets um, and it's not using one of the faster WebSocket libraries for the bot script in particular. And it's also going to be a multi-threaded operation because, I mean, the OS is going to give you sockets however it wants to do that. So it can, it can cause lag. Hopefully it doesn't cause so much lag that this video recording fails. So 60 is on one screen is like we've blown past the performance of many things I've heard about at this point, but we can go higher. Let's just kick it up to 100. This should definitely create some lag. So 100. Oh, 100 does stabilize. Um, it's feeling good. Let's go higher. Maybe it's getting towards the edge of there being some sort of defect in it, but it's looking pretty good. But let's just knock it up to 150. That's an obscene number. We should hit some, some amount of failure of something at 150. So here's 150. Just giving it a sec here to see if it's going to stabilize. So 150, I can see some sort of rhythmic motion to the red dots. This is suggesting to me that there's some amount of lag occurring. Perhaps the server's frames are taking longer to send. Um, but let's play a little. Interestingly, and I kind of knew this was going to happen, um, at 150, it looks like all these dots are lagging except me. The one I'm controlling is moving silky smooth. What does that mean? Well, <laughs> this bot script is simulating a client. It's basically repla replacing what we would have to do if we wanted to do this ourselves, which would be, I don't know, open up a dozen Chrome windows, or in this case, open up, what was it, 150 Chrome windows? We couldn't do that. I mean, the computer would be having other problems at that point. The bot script itself is what's lagging at this point. Um, it's only got, well, after it's running, it's, it's only got one core, one thread, so it's laggy. I can see the rest of the game is playing exactly as I would imagine. I can blast these guys. I can move quickly. So how do we solve this? We seem to have broken the bot script before we broke the Nenji server. Well, I mean, it's just running in its own thread, if you will. So why don't we knock it down, because 150 was way too much. Let's make it 90, because I was even a little skeptical at 100. And then let's run two scripts, meaning I'm going to open another command prompt. So this here we are stabilized at 90. I'm going to move my character off to the side. And I'm just going to run the script again. This is going to give it, you know, another CPU. And I would expect some failure from the server at 180. Let's see. What is this thing called? 2D shooter game bot. So here comes another 90 for a total of, well, I'm in there too. Um. Let's see, so what I do, I do two sets of 90, we got 181 players. So I'm seeing, once again, things that don't look like smooth movement. Let's see. I feel, you know, it might not look that bad in the video, but it is lagging, I can tell you. Um, you know, feeling the controls, it's, it's definitely lagging. So, question is, what type of lag? Well, this is a tool that helps us begin to answer this question. I can tell you that this lag does not look graphical. Let's uh, do that a little, let's, let's figure that out a little more empirically. So I'm going to open the console associated with this window, uh, you know, the browser console. Normally these open in the bottom, mine's set to open in another window. And let's turn on, at the bottom, the rendering tab for Chrome here, the FPS meter. So it's looking like it's a solid 60 FPS. Um, so I'm going to say not the renderer. How would we know if it was the server? Well, let's go look at some awesome node feature. I'm going to run the server with a profiler. Where are you, server? So I'm going to have to turn off the server to do that. So this game's going to fail, and those bots are going to be pissed. So close the server there. This is you know a frozen game right here. So the command you can run is node, I'll just type it from scratch here, or I'll hit random keys and type random stuff. Okay, node dash dash inspect. This wasn't been around in node for very long, pretty new feature. Um, and then the script you want to run might not be available in all versions of node either. This provides us a URL that we can paste into Chrome and get, 
look at a profiler that looks like the profiler that you would see you know for profiling in Chrome but it's actually connected to the V8 instance. We can do this because well somebody awesomely added this feature for us that's why we can do it but part of the reason we can do it is that Node and Chrome are very closely related. So I now have this screen I'm gonna move this somewhere here and I can collect a CPU profile and that server is now restarted so I'm gonna reconnect myself I'm alone on the server let's collect a CPU profile it's not going to say a whole lot, mind you, with just one player. So looking at the profile, I see the pro that the program is spending 91% of its time in program. It's essentially idle. Um, it's actually spending even more time idle than that, but the very crafty game loop I use on the server side has a trick to enhance its timing where if it's coming up close to the next tick of the game simulation, it uses this very... Um, intensive way of spinning a loop to make sure that it's on time and that actually makes the game look like it's a teeny bit laggier than it is in the profiler. Uh, doesn't matter a whole lot, suffice to say this, this program either way is essentially idle with one player. Let's connect one of those bot scripts and take a look, let it stabilize. Uh, something to know with the profiler connected and running it's going to degrade the performance of the server. So a game performs worse with the profiler than it does without the profiler. It does, doesn't mean the profiler is not valuable. It still points you towards where the problem is. So now with 90 players, 91 in fact, let's collect a CPU profile. Just going to let it go for a few seconds. So I see the program pinning 56% of the time in program now. Um, that's quite a bit of idleness. I would have expected, honestly, even me, maker of Nenji, I would have expected it to be a little more stressed out with this many players on one screen. But uh, it is a ridiculously simple game, so it's doing pretty great. Um, we saw that if we added another 90, it would break, or rather degrade, enough that I'd say it's lagging. Let's connect that other 90 and take another, another snapshot. All right, so now we've got some lag occurring. I want to say it's even worse than before. And let's see. But it's not, you know, it's not that bad. I wish it were worse. You know, I think the uh, bot scripts are lagging so much that they're failing to produce um, enough movement to even stress the server out. But let's profile it anyways, because no doubt 180 something players here should, should be measurable. So, I don't know how long that was, five, ten seconds. So we can see that program, the thing I was, you know, likening to idleness here, is essentially not appearing at all. I mean, it's there, it's at 16%. Um, I don't I don't know, I wouldn't consider this 16% idle. Maybe it is. No, it's, it's smooth at times and then really laggy at times. So here we can see some confirmation about what is where the lag is. We've seen it's not the renderer. We've seen it's not at 90 players, but it's certainly at 180, and it's somewhere between, you know, I could keep changing the player count and we could come down to what we considered stable. I'm not going to do that. It's a tedious exercise, but you, you can imagine how to do it. And also, you can also aim these bots at your production environment, so you can publish your game. You can go into the bot script you know, one of the first lines here is, you know, which server we're aiming it at. So you can change that to your production IP, and thus you can use your dev environment to bomb production with bots, and thus you can start to measure the production server and say, oh, well, you know, it ran like this in the dev environment, uh, but, oh, is the production server better or worse? You know, maybe it needs 20 less players, or maybe it gets 20 more players. Um, in any case, we've learned, we've seen, we've witnessed that the lag is coming from the server at this point. Now, if this were a more elaborate game, meaning there was, you know, pathfinding or a lot of collisions or, you know, it sets some features to it other than this one, which is pretty simple, in the profiler here, we would start to see functions that we should recognize because we wrote them ourselves at that point. And we'd see those bubble up to the top and we'd be like, oh, you know, at a certain player count, we get stuck in pathfinding. Pathfinding is a choke point for the game, etc. These things, I happen to know what they are. Um, these are, because they're all ninja things. This game essentially is nothing but ninja um, code. And let's see, what's it lagging at? Well, these things are pretty cryptic. I mean, 
you'd have to really know Ninji to know what it's doing, but essentially essentially there's too many players on a screen is really it. Um it would it could handle this many players if they were spread out. Um yeah, it could handle 200 apparently. You know, if it can do this, if it could almost do this as is and if this game had the players spread out and it was using the culling such that players can only see an area immediately around them, yeah, it, it could do more players. So let's look at the other bot. Um, in fact, let's connect, let's disconnect half of these. So 90, back to reasonable? Yeah, feels reasonable again. Let's go look at the other bot real quick. Because the other bot is called the data capture bot. And it lets us measure yet another thing about a game. It lets us measure bandwidth. Now, in truth, it's only an approximation of bandwidth, and I'll say more about that in a sec. But first, let's talk about the bot. This bot connects for 10 seconds, collects all the binary data that was sent to it, and writes it to a file at the end of those 10 seconds. What does that mean for us? It means, well, first off, you can change all the stuff in here. You can have it connect for one second, you could have it, um, yeah, you could do whatever you want here, but this is going to show us what 10 seconds worth of data is like from the game, and we can go look at the file. So let's let's just go to it. We can go look at the file and start to estimate the bandwidth. So this that one was called Data Capture Bot. So I'm going to connect it, or no, I've pissed off Windows. We have to type node Data Capture Bot. So it's connected now. I think I see it actually. Don't know how my eye saw it, but it's this this guy right here because it's not moving. It actually is a player. So what are we at now? 92 players. So it was there for 10 seconds, disconnected. Now it produced a log of what occurred, what it saw while connected, which is this binary data. Not readable to us, but we can go look at the file. Here's the file and see that with 90 players on screen, 92 in fact, 10 seconds worth of data recorded from the server produced a 92 kilobyte file. So translating that to something else with this many players each player is receiving 9.2 kilobytes per second um, that's not entirely accurate mind you because this is measuring what was actually received by Nenji. Nenji is sending things through web sockets which use TCP so there's some layers around it there's some overhead how much overhead is there hard to say but the overhead is minimized by the fact that Ninji is compacting these things into fairly large snapshots rather than sending a bajillion small messages. But suffice to say, it's using at least this much bandwidth. It's not going to be a ton more, but here's a good feel for it. Now, is this good or bad? Well, it's hard to compare it to things because what game can have 90 players on the same screen as you? Like, none. Um, I'd say it's exceptionally good. You know, a game like Counter-Strike or World of Warcraft, you get, you know, 10 players around and this, those games are sitting between 10 kilobytes a second and 30 and those are some very well programmed games um so you know this is good they're all good uh but this is pretty amazing but this is a really simple game too you know they're not 3d positions it's it's it would be way more if they were 3d positions there'd be the directions they're facing etc and so on in any case this is how you use this tool one quick side note about this tool the data capture bot is it just started there connected measured 10 seconds of data many games are very likely to do something when a player connects that's unique something different than the rest of the game state for example being sent the map or some initial variables about the game you could write this um, to skip the first few seconds after connecting and then record 10 seconds after that and thus get to the same kind of data so we've looked at two tools we've seen well, we've seen some amazing performance, but we've also seen some ways where we can start to measure that performance and see what it is. Let's look at one more thing, because I put some, let's call them deliberate flaws here in the 2D shooter demo. They're not so much deliberate flaws as they are, as, as it is the fact that any game, if you continue to add entities to it, continue to add players to it, you will eventually hit some sort of choke point, some sort of problem. Let's go find some of its problems, because it's hard to say that, oh, it starts to get a little slow after about 150 players on one screen. It's hard to say that's a problem, because that's, you know, that's amazing. So let's find, but it does, it has a more, it has a more, a more, um, it has a worse problem than that, and it has to do with the bullets. So let's go see that at work. 
So I'm going to add to the bot script, or rather modify it. They were, none of them were shooting. They were all sending false for this thing that denotes what they're shooting. We're going to send it true. We're just going to set it true. And I'm going to turn the player count down a lot because I, I know this is going to cause a big problem. We're just going to start with 30 bots. Now, this message here is, you know, random movement, mouse position, and true for is shooting. The mouse position is zero zero, which means they're all going to be firing at the top left corner. They're all, it's as if you were playing the game and you were clicking and holding here on the top of the corner. Let's see it. So, 30. Looks, um, you know, it starts to form some sort of interesting pattern in its own right. It doesn't even look like a game anymore. In any case, the game is lagging a little bit here, even at 30. And yet it was doing so amazingly there at, you know, blowing past 100. There's numerous reasons for that. Worth mentioning and worth understanding just in the general scheme of what can Denji do and what can't it do. First off, in this game, the bullets are programmed as entities. They didn't have to be entities. Um, in fact, I'm not sure it particularly makes sense to define a bullet as an entity if the bullet, in fact, is created from one point and then travels in a straight direction with an un unalterable course. Because essentially nothing about it changes. Just the message that created it is enough data to render the bullet. Because it experiences no changes. So they could have been made as messages. If they were messages, the amount of data that'd be being sent is way less, because how many bullets does each entity manage to get out from themselves? It's hard to tell just by looking at it. I'm sure I could count it, but it's somewhere in the realm of 8 to 10. So these 30 players, let's just say they're each producing 10 entities. I think that's slightly overshooting it, but that means here, while we might only have 30 players, we have, I don't know, 330 entities which is more than we had previously when we had 150 players where each was controlling a single entity. So you can start to see different ways in which you can stress the game out. Another thing that's going to occur when you turn the player count up a little bit, and um, this is something I discovered by just trying it, is we're going to end up with a graphical problem, which surprised me when I first found it. So I turned it up to 50, because it was kind of okay at 30, but not quite. At 50, if I didn't have this frame rate reader up here, you, we might jump to the conclusion that the server was lagging. However, I do have the frame rate open, and it's kind of important to do that, because what do you know? Sometimes it can be the graphical side of things, even if you didn't expect it. So the problem here is that at this number of players, it's these yellow explosions, is my guess, are creating too much lag. We could profile the client side and get that information um, but I'm not going to do that because I feel it's obvious. And let's talk about that. Why why do these yellow explosions cause such trouble? Well, first off, they're graphics objects in Pixie. That's a very unoptimized thing. Pixie likes to render sprites, and it likes to render sprite, uses sprite batches and varying kinds of things. Um, if it's going to be rendering some massive amount of stuff like this, because this is, at this point, I don't know what's really being created with 50 entities, each firing 10 entities out before they start to disappear and then whenever those entities collide with something they're creating these impact effects and they're creating one of those every frame just the number of things it's actually making is I don't know maybe well there's 500 entities at least and I don't know how many of the impact things are out there a lot so maybe there's like a thousand things being added every frame at 60 frames a second so at that level it's having a problem could we fix that problem? You know, well, if your goal was, hey, I want my game to kind of look like this, but it's kind of having an early problem, you know, it can't pass 50 players. Yes. If that's, you know, how we're going to, if that's how we're going to look at it, then yeah, we can fix that. We just change the impact effects. We make them simpler. We say don't generate, you know, a dozen for each thing. We could also start to change the bullets and be like, hmm, bullets being entities, full-on entities isn't working for me, I'm going to try and make them local events or messages, something that's sent once and not again, as opposed to an entity whose data sent about at every frame. Those are ways that you could maintain the kind of gameplay that's in this game, and, I mean, it's, it is an alteration to the gameplay, but that's a way you could make some performance changes, since you've already seen that it can get, you know, close to 150 players when it's just players, um, and thus raise this number here, which where it's stuck at around 50. So I hope you find the bot to be a valuable tool, and now you've seen some ways in which it can be used and heard about a dozen things that you might do with it.
um, best of luck programming.